Hello my fellow wizards, whether you've been playing Wiz since its launch in 2008 or just found the game recently, there's going to be stuff you just don't know. Like the fact that Dworgen's last name is actually Finkelstein, yikes, no wonder he keeps that quiet, or that our cheerful little Halston Balestrom was actually once a gang leader. <gasps> But never fear, fellow wizards, there's always new tricks you can add to your arsenal to make your life as a wizard that much easier. So today, I'm covering the top 10 tips and tricks you'll want to know when playing Wizard 101. Let's hop right in with number 10, use friendly players to travel fast. The April 2021 update brought with it the addition of the social tab located under the friends button in the upper right corner of your screen. Here you can find a bunch of people labeled as friendly players who are eager to help others quest. You can also mark yourself as a friendly player here. Now, I'm all for some jolly cooperation, but this option also serves as a way to teleport around town quickly without the need for marking your spot for later, or having to walk there. You know, like a freaking pleb. If you need to go to the bazaar, for instance, just pull up the friendly player list and find someone there to instantly teleport to. The same logic applies to areas like the Pet Pavilion, PvP Arena, or elsewhere. Save yourself some time, and if you feel like paying it back, mark yourself as a friendly player so people can teleport to your location as well. Now there's no need for the less... <sighs> Um, savory methods of travel. Number 9. Restore energy when leveling up. Some new players might not immediately notice this, but every time you level up in Wiz, you get your energy bar fully restored. This can be great if you need to train your pet, take care of your garden, or feel like fishing for that special mount. If you need more energy and know you're only one quest away from leveling, you can plan around this by using up all your energy, finishing that quest and leveling up, and bam, you have another full bar of energy to use in a short period of time rather than waiting for it to regenerate over many hours. However, did you know you can maximize your energy gain by waiting to turn in your quest and get that final bit of XP until after you've swapped over to some energy gear? When you level up, your energy will be filled up to the total energy available on your current gear. So if you swap from your regular questing gear to any energy gear you have, your total will be higher and you'll gain that much more energy back upon leveling up. This can be a huge difference between different gear sets, so always remember to switch gear before turning in your final quest to get the most resources for your time. An alternative way to handle this is to simply level lock your character when you know you're about to level up and then unlock your character when it's advantageous to get an energy refill. Locking your character is a fairly new feature that prevents you from gaining any more experience while still accumulating in the background. Upon unlocking your character, you will gain all that extra experience you were storing and level up gaining your energy back at the same time. So in theory, you could time your level up for when you want that energy boost the most, like later in the day when you're trying to train your pet. Number eight, store your gold for later. Early on, gold storage probably won't be an issue for most wizards, but pretty quickly you may find that you have too much of the stuff on hand and start getting hounded by the fun police, AKA. Hey there, looks like you about to lose yourself some gold. The gold cap can be kind of annoying to get around, but there are ways to store your gold away for a rainy day if you end up needing more than the cap will allow. There are certain treasure cards, reagents, and snacks that can be relied upon to hold their value in the bazaar so you can invest your gold by buying up those items and then storing them to sell later when you actually need that extra gold on hand. Note that there is some gold loss with this method so you won't recoup your entire investment, but it's a great way to get around that gold cap when you're on a particularly big spending binge. Most reagents are always a good investment as you can store a huge amount in your inventory at a time and they are always useful for crafting. With treasure cards, however, I recommend the old reliable Empower TC as your best option. These act as the unofficial currency for most trading communities and can be traded for other valuable and rare TC or gear because they consistently sell for a large amount at the bazaar, between 800 and 2000 gold apiece depending on the amount in stock already. So if you buy or collect Empowers, it's a great way to ensure that you will later gain a solid amount of gold back when you sell them. For snacks, again, almost any option is decent because you can store so many in your inventory, but some favorites of mine are the Rank 7 Snacks, Shanta Pudding, and Killer Tomato since they're both useful for pet training and are often in decent demand due to being the highest ranked snacks in the bazaar, so you can reliably sell them back later for a decent amount of gold. Or you could be like me and just buy gold with gold as a way to finally feel something in this game. I'm so lonely. I mean, um, <laughs> um, rich. Number seven, swap between gear sets quickly. A surprising number of wizards don't seem to know about the handy equipment sets option located at the bottom of your backpack page. Here you can easily create different equipment sets by equipping everything you'd like included in your set, for instance, all your damage gear, and then hitting the create new option at the bottom. You can then name your sets and swap easily between different ones with the control and number keys. This allows rapid swapping between, say, your questing and energy gear for easy access. No more awkwardly having to swap out each individual piece one at a time. 
Note sets also include pets and mounts too, so keep that in mind when creating a new set. This saves so much time, especially in dungeons where you might want to swap between a main damage gear set and support gear. Number six, make different decks for different needs. Okay, this happens far too often where you'll enter a dungeon and have to fight your way through several rounds of mobs before getting to the boss. But hang on, now you have to spend another five minutes swapping out spells in your deck because you need a different set of spells just for the boss. This can leave you and your teammates frustrated as everyone has to wait to put together a whole new deck for the situation. But my fellow wizards, there's a better way. Make it a habit of creating a couple different decks for different situations that you can quickly swap between. I, for instance, have a deck I use just for mobs that holds only a few cards so I can immediately find a fast AoE to wipe everything out. I then have a separate boss deck stocked with a few more cards and some strong single hits for when I hit the end of a dungeon. You may even want another support deck filled with blades or heals in case you aren't going to be the main hitter. The point is, create different decks for different situations so you can have one ready for every situation and only need to make minor adjustments. You'll save yourself and your questing buddies a whole lot of time. As an added bonus, you can also rename your decks by clicking on this button in the upper left corner of your spell deck tab to make it that much easier to quickly swap between the types of decks and spells you might want. This is especially helpful if you otherwise might have multiple copies of the same deck, which might make it hard to remember which is which. Number five, trade treasure cards between characters. Did you follow my earlier tip about storing gold and empowers and now you need somewhere to store your TC? Or what if your fire wizard got lucky and nabbed a ratspin TC and you wanna trade it over to your life character? Unfortunately, there's no current way to trade treasure cards to your other characters or store them in your bank. However, one easy workaround is to simply create an extra free account just for the sake of storing or transferring treasure cards. Though a bit annoying, it's not too hard to make a new account and simply trade any TC you want to store to a throwaway character who can then hold onto it for you for safekeeping, or allow you to swap to a new character on your main account to trade the treasure card to. With this method, I was able to transfer valuable TC like Pigsy or Deer Knight to the correct wizards without having to rely on a stranger or middleman who might abscond with my hard-earned TC. Hopefully King's Isle will give us a better way to transfer TCs between our individual characters safely, but in the meantime, this is a good workaround. Number four, cheaper pet hatching. While the pet kiosk can be quite handy for finding the right pet to hatch with for the talents you want, it can also be really expensive, sometimes over 100,000 gold a hatch. However, if you're smart about it, you can vastly reduce the cost of pet hatching if you hatch with other people directly or with yourself. Obviously, this tip won't work for every situation, but oftentimes, if you check out other people's pets in the pet pavilion, you may find some of them have the exact talents or stats or body you're looking for. If you're polite about it, you can then ask them to hatch or lend you their pet directly rather than going through the kiosk by entering the hatchery and going to a sigil or requesting a hatch directly through the friends tab. Doing it this way is a lot less gold and also gives you the chance to hatch them again later if you friend them so you know you'll be able to hatch consistently with the same pet over time rather than hoping the kiosk has what you need. People can either hatch with you and get an egg back as well or lend their pet a certain number of times per day for other rewards like hatch peppers which can be used to craft useful pet training potions and snacks from Dr. Puro. Another great option is to hatch with yourself by using one of these sigils in the hatchery if, for instance, you want to transfer the talents or stats from one pet to a new pet. Hatching the right pet can take a number of tries, so finding ways to save gold can speed up the process a lot and let you hatch more for less resources. I actually lend my energy pets quite often and have found people to be very friendly and helpful if you just ask politely. Number three, lock your items. Have you ever accidentally sold or deleted that new piece of gear or Bartleby forbid that new mount you just bought or farmed? It's the worst feeling in the world to lose your prized items because you were clicking too quickly when clearing out your inventory. I've seen way too many horror stories on forums or Reddit about this, and it's always heartbreaking. However, I have a guaranteed way to keep your items safe while playing Wiz. Take advantage of the lock feature in the backpack section of your inventory to simply lock in place any item, mount, pet, or gear you don't want to lose. Locking it prevents you from being able to sell or trash the item by accident. When there are as many item and gear drops as in Wiz, it can be far too easy to have a minor lapse in concentration and accidentally quick sell or delete something you really wanted to keep. So remember to keep it simple and lock your important stuff ASAP. Number two, extra item storage. Okay, so you've maxed out your bank and your houses, and Prospector Zeke won't leave you alone about your oversized backpack. Looks like you picked up a wee bit more than you can carry. 
I swear to Bartleby, can't this guy mind his own business? What are you supposed to do? You can't be expected to ugh, actually sell your stuff, right? You need to hoard it, darn it. Hoard it until the end of time. Well, you can always craft the jewel, gear, and seed vaults if you need some extra space. While these are available for crowns in the crown shop, you can actually also just craft them for free from recipes which can be bought from Toshio and Mushu. While they do require some resources to craft, they are incredibly useful once you have them. You can have up to one of each per character, and each vault can hold up to 100 of each item type, which adds up quickly if you have them for every character. Now you won't have to throw away your stuff ever again. Can they just make a hoarder badge already? Number one, reset your location. Here's the scenario. You're questing in the middle of Avalon and need to grab something from your bank real quick, so you teleport home. However, you forgot to mark the spot you left while questing and now you have to run all the way to where you were to resume questing. Annoying, right? Well, I have an easy workaround for you. If you simply quit to the main menu and re-enter the game as the same character, you'll find you've been dropped right back where you started. For whatever reason, the game doesn't like reloading you back into your house if you quit the game while inside, so when you log back in as that character, it'll drop you back in the main world wherever you were last. This works pretty much everywhere and is a handy time saver while also saving you from needing to use mana to always mark your location when you want to pop home for something. I actually use this trick quite often, especially in worlds which lack a good amount of teleports to get around quickly. Yeah, this is not a fun time, guys. All right, my fellow wizards, those are some of my top 10 tips and tricks for Wizard 101. Comment your favorite tricks you use below, and if you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing. I hope to see you out there in the spiral, and happy questing.